Great, thanks, darling. Um, hope you enjoyed that um, whiz around the euro. Uh, fascinating stuff. And uh, if you are looking for bond prices, bond yields, you can find them over on investing.com. Just move the chat out of the way. So it's over there. Let's get that down out of the way. Right, I'm on the Aussie yen, um, which is moving very nicely, as you can see. 15 second, one minute, three minutes strung across the top and down the bottom. We've got the five, 10 and the daily. And it's all about risk sentiment. This market moves on, all financial markets move on risk. It's simple as that. It is a, you can think of it as a seesaw, which is essentially what it is. It's a balance between risk on and risk off. And in a nutshell, that encapsulates this whole business because it is money chasing safe haven or it's money chasing higher risk for higher reward, and that's it. And that is the constant flow that you see moving across the related markets, whether they're in uh, currencies, whether they're in equities, whether they're in commodities, whether they're in bonds, it's as simple as that, either on an intraday basis or on a longer term basis. So I'm on the Aussie yen. Uh, I'm just keeping an eye on the VIX, which I've got over on the right-hand side. I'll pull that over in a minute. Uh, we'll just see where that's going. Uh, the move here has this great VPA lesson in here. Uh, you can see where the Aussie is. In fact, let's just hop over onto it. Let's stay here for a moment. Just want to show you this to start with, and it's several lessons in one, really. Uh, the nice thing about Ninja Trader is it tells you automatically where you are in real time in terms of your local time. So this is seven o'clock. Uh, this is the start of the European session for us. This is eight o'clock, London getting underway. So this is a run up. We were up around six o'clock here. Nice move higher. Uh, nice uh, um, VPA lesson here where you've got rising price, you've got rising volume, which is what you want to see because whenever a market's moving and you've got a similar sort of situation going on here. So this is a very positive signal. You've got rising price, widening spreads, rising uh, and rising volume and everything's in agreement. You've also got the volatility in here. So clearly when you've got the volatility, it's a signal. Be aware there may be a reversal uh, or at least congestion coming soon so it's just a signal to be aware if you've got profit in there as i always say either scale out if you've uh, if you've if you're if you've got multiple lots on on in the position you can take some off the table uh, if you've just got one you, you've got a decision to make just close out take the profit and run and wait for the market to to uh, to continue in your direction if it's going to do that if it's not going to reverse it in other words if it's just going to go into congestion the interesting thing with the, this is this is the anomalous candle here you can see the price rising you've got price rising and then you get a much narrower spread candle on high volume so what is that telling you it's telling you that's anomalous in other words if this candle had been in agreement with what's gone before this should have been up here somewhere it wasn't it's here so what is going on in here it's basically selling this is heavy selling into it's partly profit taking it's also the market makers selling in it's also the start of the european session so you expect higher volume but that is a narrow narrow spread uh, price candle and therefore the conclusion from that is that you know this is weakness appearing in other words the market is not strong it's not going to carry on higher for a while it may well do which is certainly the case here but for the time being you're expecting something to happen because you've got a lot of volume going into a relatively narrow spread candle. And the analogy I always use is one of, imagine driving a car up a very steep uh, mountainside that's covered in ice. You will get to a point, you might start off uh, going up reasonably rapidly, but you, you'll eventually get to a point where you're applying more accelerator, more power to the gas. In other words, you're, you're putting more power into the car and the car eventually reaches a, a stationary point at which the wheels are just spinning and you're not actually moving forward. And that, in essence, is what is going on here. You then get two candles that follow. These are also interesting. What have you got here? You've got, again, this is now anomalous. Why is it anomalous? Um, two reasons. First of all, the two spreads are the same, and therefore, by all things being equal, you would expect the volume to be equal. It isn't. The volume's actually fallen away on the second one. So what is that is telling you is that you've got now a, a market that's falling, but it's on falling volume. So again, it's anomalous because as you need rising volume and rising price, so indeed you need falling, uh, you need rising volume when the market is falling. In other words, you need effort. So you need effort when you're going up and you need effort when you're coming down. So if you've got no effort, then clearly that particular move is not going to go very far. 
with an intercongestion, which is what we, 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 we're expecting anyway, because we've got a volatility candle here, followed through on this one, but this one is now moving into what we expect to see, which is congestion. Now we're coming out the other side. We've gone through this, this minor top here. We're going up nicely. We've got a nice uh, chunk of volume gone into that one, a little bit of a wick to the upper body, you know, but nothing particularly major. There's bound to be a bit of profit taking in there. What's also nice is on this particular chart, we're moving up into low volume regions on the volume point of control here. So in from a volume perspective, there is very little to uh, act as a barrier to advancement of price because volume works in exactly the same way as price. These levels down here are based on the accumulation distribution indicator, and they are essentially based on price action. And the way it works is very simple, although it's a very sophisticated indicator, but essentially what happens is the thicker the line, the greater the number of times that has been tested. This has been tested 12 times. In other words, it held, it tested, it held, it tested, it held. Now, once that is breached, in this case, as, resist, uh, as resistance overhead, it's now become a, a strong platform of support. So that's based from a price perspective, and you've got another layer underneath here. Volume works in exactly the same way, but it's from a volume perspective. So where you come into these high volume regions, you expect congestion to follow. Where you come into these low volume areas, as we are now, in other words, low volume nodes, you would expect the price to move through there pretty rapidly because there's very little in the way of volume to act as resistance. So volume and price can be used in exactly the same way. Now, the other lesson from here is really to do with multiple time frames because this was the 10 minute candle. And the candle you saw on the five minute chart or the two candles, if you, if you add them together, obviously, Two times five is 10. So this is what you get on your 10 minute time frame. So it's just another example of the power of using multiple time frames to give you additional information. And what this chart also gives you is a further signal here. This is what we're seeing on the 10 minute as opposed to what we saw on the five minute. So what have we got here? We've got nice high volume, nice up thrust candle good wick to the upper body, narrow spread candle, a narrow spread on the body. So what are we expecting? Either a reversal potentially, or at the very least weakness to follow, which it does. It goes into congestion and now we're picking up. And the reason we're picking up is because we've gone into to London, London open, we'll hop over and see what's going on in terms, just eyeballing over on the right-hand side, see what the VIX is doing. That's now down a little bit. So that's now down at 24.2, down a fraction. So it's just confirming the fact that, I'll pull it over in a moment, it's just confirming the fact that risk sentiment, the sun is, as we always say, the sun is shining in the markets at the moment. So, you know, we're in a risk on territory, everyone's happy, and, uh, you know, risk on is prevailing at present. Hence the reason we're seeing the Aussie yen rise, hence the reason we're seeing the VIX fall, hence the reason we're seeing equities rise. I'll pull that over in a moment. But I just wanted to highlight that because it gives you a different perspective on time frames when you're trading multiple time frames is just a it's a building block it is a foundation stone of of trading whatever you're trading multiple time frames will give you additional information that you would not normally see it's very easy as i've said many times before to overlay one candle on another and come up with a a reversal where you've got a bearish bearish engulfing or bullish engulfing, you overlay one candle on the other, that's very simple to do. What you don't see uh, or what is less easy to do is to apply that to more complex timeframes where you've got multiple charts, where you've got multiple candles rather, and trying to overlay one on another mentally and get a picture. So when you're on a five minute chart, you look at a 30 minute chart or a 15 minute chart, you get a completely different perspective, not only of the, the chart itself, but also of the all important volume profiles. You also get strong indications like we did here. We had the 10 minute uh, volatility trigger. You may or may not see that on a faster time frame. And again, it's a fast, in this case it was, but in uh, you often you don't, you'll see a volatility trigger on a different time frame completely. And it just gives you a heads up as to what to expect next. Let's just see what's going on in terms of the VIX. Here we are, just pull this over. It's a bit of a funny, uh, sorry about this, different, um, I've got it on a different uh, resolution on that screen, so it comes over in a strange size. This is what the VIX is doing. This is the one minute, so we're trading, uh, trade, we've opened a little bit gap down. It's rallying a little bit. You can see we've got the volatility on here. This is on the daily, so this is probably the easiest one to look at. 
Uh, this is where we are on the daily, but as we keep saying, we're trading at 24.2. Uh, given that the NQ particularly is just on this rampage higher, it's dragging the other two along with it. Um, this morning, certainly early doors, they were actually going in the same direction, but over the last uh, few weeks, we have seen divergent, not only in intraday, but also on a daily basis where you've seen the NQ rising and you've seen the other two falling. I think we had the inverse of that uh, at last week where we actually had those two rising and the NQ falling. So there's an awful lot of anomalous price action going on at the moment. Uh, the VIX is key. Whatever you're doing, you've got to have the VIX up on an intraday basis. It doesn't matter what you're trading. It just gives you the heads up on. It's a straight risk on risk off uh, indicator, if you will. It is it is the the um, the seesaw, if you will, the visual seesaw that I mentioned earlier, because it just gives you a balance of puts and calls. But the key thing with it is that at the moment we're still trading around this 24 level. We're still 24, 25, 26. Uh, and given how how strong the the rally that has been, the V-shaped rally in equity markets from a personal uh, perspective, I would expect the VIX to be trading at a much lower level than it is at the moment. Just move that out of the way, pop it back over there. So we're coming to a little bit of pause point on the Aussie yen. Uh, you've also got to remember if we go over onto the multiple CSIs, let's go and have a quick look there. I can find them, there we go. That's where we are at the moment. There we go. So that's where we are. Uh, the Aussie, this is a 10 minute, five minute, three minute and one minute. So this is very fast down the bottom here. We've got a little bit of, a, a, of some buying coming in on the yen. But in terms of the current uh, profile of the Aussie yen, if you will, on the slightly slower time frames up on 10, it's still up into overbought. The pound's up here as well. The yen is very much into oversold territory. And obviously, from a long perspective, for those of you who come along regularly, you'll know what I'm about to say. My eye is always drawn to the tops and bottoms because I'm greedy. I like to trade reversals. I like to get in early. I'm prepared to pay a higher price for that in terms of my stop loss position because ultimately it means I grab as much of the trend as I can when that reversal takes place. But it means you've got to be patient. You've got to wait. You've got to put more risk on the table. And you as a trader may be more comfortable trading a trend once it's underway, once this starts to roll over from here and move down, then the trend is already in play. And uh, it's just uh, a lower risk proposition from a financial perspective at any rate, because you're putting a much tighter stop loss in position. If you've got a trend that's already moving, uh, your stop loss as a scalping trader might be a handful of pips, might be four, five, six, depending on which spread, which pair you're trading and, and the appropriate spread. If you're trading a reversal, you're going to have to be patient and wait. And for the same sort of um, currency pair, you might be putting 10 or maybe 15 or maybe even 20 pips at risk. That's the nature of the business. And as I'm going back to what I said at the start, this business is about risk and reward, and the same applies to trading. The more risk you put on the table, then the greater should be your reward, all things being equal. The less risk you're prepared to put on the table, the lower your reward. It's as simple as that. So in my case, I'm prepared to put more risk on the table because I want to get into the trend before it starts, and my payoff is I take as much of that trend because I'm in at the start. Other traders will jump on board once the train's left the station and they will receive lower reward for that particular risk profile. Right, let me pass back to Anna at that point, if I may.